Hello, McWarriors. How's it going? And welcome to another episode of Rook Tech. Guys, we have a Timber Wolf to build. 15 days until we have that beautiful 75 toner in our mech bay. And I want to let some time pass and we want to play some missions while we are waiting. Also, I updated to Rook Tech version 1.1.3, I think, something like that. Now, vehicles are not automatically retrieved from the battlefield, so we should keep that in mind. And there were some other shenanigans that the Rook Tech modders did there. So, yeah, there is an actual. There's an actual thing about not getting our vehicles in too much danger now. But anyway, here we are. We have nine days on the Timberwolf. The Stormcrows are gonna come out as soon as well. The Stalker, man, we need that third mech bay in order to get more mechs worked on at the same time. It is so crucial at that point. Look at that. Look at how long it takes. Uh, but we finally got it. So, Guys, we have nine days on the financial report timer, which is okay. But I certainly want to take a look at my, first of all, the crow. Oh yeah, the crow got hit hard last time. I'm not even sure if I want to keep that thing, even. I am not sure if that is a good idea, because... Uh, I mean, a crow is fine, I guess, but... Uh, the timber wolf would be better. <laughs> and, um... Uh, I guess we're gonna repair that. We can get some value out of that, that's the good news. The bad news is that our heat management, our heat sink kit is destroyed. We got uh, a quick cell and a proto heat sink kit. Interesting. The quick cell and the proto heat sink kit. With the quick cell heat sink kit we can make the mech viable again. It is not great, but it is viable. And I think I'm gonna drop the mines, I'm gonna just get some more, let's say engine heat sink, something like that. Engine heat sink plus two. As well as additional quick cell engine heats or quick cell heat sinks plus a bunch of medium lasers. It will take us not too much time and then we can play that mech again. So let's go with that. So where are my quick cell heat sinks? We have one, exactly one. Perfect. So some regular medium lasers, I'd say, and then we are good to go. We could take heavy lasers, but they, they would be too hot anyway. So where are my, my mediums? Where are my mediums? I have no mediums anymore. Did I sell all my mediums? I think I sold all my mediums. Great. So we're gonna put an X pulse in here. You can see the heat management is already going down. But we also have an exchanger that will probably most likely 100% go into our timber wolf. Um, what else? We have ferro, we have endo. I need some ECM, some kind of, you know, thing that we don't have. Great. So a beagle probe it is then. No ECM. And that's gonna be our crow for the moment. Again, the idea is that it only takes one day. So here we go. Now let's take a look at the Timberwolf, and as you can see it still runs two PPCs, one on each arm. It has a small laser in the center, alright? And it has the heatsink kit plus the five engine heatsinks, which is beautiful. The first thing that we're gonna be doing now, yeah, that's what I thought. We have to armor up that thing, 100%, so there is no way around it. And I think I will not go all in, because I think it's better to shave a little bit of front armor down, so that we have something like a like a fraction, like half a fraction of a ton, that we can then uh, use to mix and match. And I would say, that's gonna be the next thing that the Timber is gonna do, so six days. And in the meantime, our Stormcrow is getting repaired, Moloch and Shotgun both are out of action, and we wanna play another mission in order to get some money, in order to get some parts, and get some stuff that we can use to fix our friend, the Timberwolf. So what are we doing here? I'm thinking about something like a nice recovery mission, three and a half skull, two and a half skull, I don't know, just a quick battle. If that's against, I wanted to say, pirates or clans, I would take the battle. Hashtag quick battle. Are we gonna take it? I think we're gonna take it, and then we're gonna see what we can get from here. So the idea is that we're gonna just take some uh, weapon systems, most... Oh, nice, a Warthog. Um, uh, first and foremost, weapon systems, that's important. And we have the Kronos, the Stalker, the UZL Urban Lord Stormcrow, that's the other crow. We have the Hetzer and the other vehicles that are not in here, which is, I think, okay. So let's deploy just like that. So it's gonna be a little bit... I wouldn't say it's a challenge mission. It would be a challenge mission if we weren't so heavily overpowered. Um, but yeah, we cannot drop vehicles on this mission. Uh, additional vehicles. So our third lance is completely locked. We cannot use that. And there is one pilot that we have no real control over. I mean, yes, we can control him on the battlefield, but it is not one of our pilots. Not one of the seasoned ones, so... Yes, that. But at the same time, there's a Warthog on the battlefield that we can use as our meat shield because we don't need to worry about any repair costs or any refitting or losing that thing in any way because it's not my mech, it's not my tank. It's not even a mech or tank. It's a vehicle. It's a, it's a VTOL. <laughs> it is a bird plane, guys. It's a freaking bird plane. So yeah, very quick mission. Two skulls. We're gonna get some equipment for the Timberwolf. And we're gonna think about what we want to do with the Timby. 
I mean, it comes with the two PPCs already. We can slap a, let's say, Gauss rifle on it and we are done with the build. It would be a mid-range, mid to long-range pinpoint build. Two peeps, one Gauss, that works. But I think it's too simple. I, I mean, simple is easy, simple is sometimes good, but too simple? I don't know. Also, high ground? Nope, not really possible. Seems they have a crap ton of supports here. I think I want to start actually here. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna do that. Let's start here. The enemies are probably scattered on the hill and in the bowl here on the right side. And they are. So let's take a look at what we have. We have a question mark. Seems to be a tank, tracks, piranha, okay, let's stinger, something like that. Alrighty. Another tank. Yet again. Holy crap, what, what happened here? Nothing happened. No, wait, this is kind of an AMS or something. Two helicopters. Might be yellow jackets. And that's a trebuchet, right? No, a centurion. Look at this guy. Oh, I love centurions. I like them aesthetically. Anyway, so the first few things that we will do is we're gonna wait for those guys. So that's a stealthed VTOL. <laughs> With a lot of mines. Ah, those might be sensor mines. I see, I see, I see. So this might be in uh, AWEX. Alright, so we have reinforcements, we have a pirate lance. We have no support lances, funnily enough. So support lances will spawn based on your relative strength to your enemies. If you are on par with the skulls, then I think there's a like 9% chance to get that. Um, but the more you have in relation to your enemies, the, the, the chances to spawn a support lance is gonna grow. So, I think... Oh, we're gonna jump. Jump out of here? You know what? Let's go. Let's just move it. Double time. So... Those were actual landmines. Alright. I thought they were sensor mines, but that's okay. So, what can we hit? 18% yellow jacket. I don't like that guy. So, we're gonna use... Oh, God, it's still pretty bad. Let's not use the laser module. Let's just shoot him regularly. Since the lasers also don't have a hit chance at all, really. Next round they will have, because we will be in range, and then, of course, um, we also have our sensors available. So, Uziel. Let's go. 16%. Still pretty bad. I'm gonna take the 16. Why not? Oh, I was loaded with Hydra. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> sure. So, Stalker. Stalker doesn't want to run through the mines. The Stalker is gonna move over here. We're gonna eat some mines still if we do it like this. No, it's fine. Oh, I don't like so let's see what we can drop there. We have the two Thunderbolts. Gonna shoot standard ammo. Barrage coming in as well. Let's go with that. Big hits on the Gorgon. I love it. Oh, this is our Storm Crow. The Crow is also gonna clear up the left side. And yet again, the mines are inevitable. There's nothing I can do against it right now. So, shoot a wasp with a million missiles. I want to get out of this mission as quickly as possible. This is just a milk run for me, so... Just so that you know. Um, here's our Warthog. Spiff, by the way. It's not too bad. Actually, he's a pretty bad pilot. Like, what? Seriously? Guts... Wait, Gunnery 1, Piloting 1, Guts 0, Tactics 1? That can't be right. Not at all. So what do we have? Uh, Air-to-ground missiles, rotary 5, uh, AOE rockets. You know what? We're gonna try to hit the wasp a bit more. Oh, this is... He's not gonna like that. Yeah. We just needed to shoot three times here. Easily. Alright, so Kronos, our melee mech, is gonna go and... Hot seat cockpit, supercharger, everything on. I wanna clear everything down here. Are you kidding me? You know what? I'm gonna take the charge attack. Let's go! Let's just do it. Let's have, let's have some fun here. It's a bit of a risky move, I know, but I think we're gonna be fine. So that's good. Bam! Explosions! Noise. Is the Gorgon the last guy on the left side? It might be. And then there is, I don't know, if this guy here, the... What's that? A, a Kid Fox, an Uller. Oh, look at that. Yeah, we ate that. 
Luckily, we have the massive damage reduction. This is so good. Next up is Mr. Urban Lord. We will sprint in. We're gonna use our laser pulse module. The laser pulse module has a pretty sizable um, jam or fail chance uh, that racks up quite quickly. Therefore, I was not using it last turn, so I can use it now. We're gonna go for RNG. We're gonna go for everything. Roger. I would love to take an MML, honestly. I really want to play around with those. There's some seem very interesting weapon systems. It's micro missile launchers. And I think you can use them in streak mode or you can uh, just use dumb fire mode and shoot 10 additional missiles. So, no hydras here. We're gonna use thunder. Nope. So I thought I had SAM. I don't. We're gonna still shoot the yellow jacket down like that. Oh, we try. Aha, so the rotor is damaged. I think a little bit of follow-up and he's down. Also, the Centurion is running an ATM-9 pirate, AOE rockets and a heavy pirate laser. Eh, he's jumping. And he's accurate. What? That hurt a lot. Oh, God, I was sleeping. What do you want? What do you want? I want you to kill this thing. So let's go ahead and drop a thunderbolt on his face. <laughs> let's see. Bam! Down he goes. Big explosion. I love it. I really like my Thunderbolt build here. It's really cool. So, Myrmidon. Oh no. Oh no. That is not good. My Uziel is prime target here. So what are we doing against it? I mean... There's one thing we can and should do, and that's bringing the Warthog in. The funny thing is that we still have a pretty good hit chance here on this guy. The, the air to ground missiles are 50%, but I think they are better down here and we can drop everything. So let's also use Phantom Mech, why not? So Phantom Mech gives us higher evasion for this in next round. And I should have used it before moving, by the way. Anyway, mm, two shots. He's unsteady. Take that. Take that. Multiple weapons with no ammo. So, what about you, Gorgon? Actually hitting my Kronos, but that's okay. And I do believe that the barrage might be enough to kill that dude. But just to make sure, I should probably follow up. I mean... It's 50-something, it's 30-something. Both are dangerous, that's the thing. This guy has a bolt on AMS, he's gonna eat all of our missiles. No, we're gonna go for the, for the Gorgon. Light him up. I always hate when the barrage is not doing anything, you know? Oh, but anyway. Alright, so, what are we doing here? I think we will just move, or do we sprint? I cannot sprint right now. Oh no, wait, it's just calculating like crazy. In order to get into the fight, I need to go up here again. But that's okay, let's go for it. So, we are evasive now. And we can certainly shoot that dude. And we should. Nice. So, Barrage is coming down. This round, like the round number three, we should actually be done. And we should have a decent initiative. Although, the Kid Fox still maintains 23. That's crazy. But the bait is, the bait is taken. The Warthog is the main target. And it's exactly what I wanted here. What's next? 22. 22 is gonna be our Uziel that probably needs to pull back a little or just go all in. So. Commander. I mean, there are three prime targets. Is the Centurion still dangerous, though? God. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna go down here. We're gonna use Vigilance. I'm gonna show the right side to my enemies. And we're gonna try to take the yellow jacket down. And we got him, nice. Cool. So let's think about initiative. This guy is 19, the tank is 14. Boom. I have an idea. Laser pulse module has a 5% fail chance. I'm gonna... Maybe I'm standing here. Stand and shoot? No, we need to get a little closer in order to, for our heavy laser to do things. Let's go for an offense. Never mind. I wanted to say offensive push, but maybe we get lucky here. I wanted to lag him. That was my idea. 
Okay. Unsteady. So, Kid Fox, how do I get a hit chance on you? Seriously. How? I don't? What? Oh, come on! I should be able to target him! Maybe not. Alright. So, we're gonna, we're gonna just sprint down here. Not doing anything with the crow. No, that's fine. Alright. Ready for orders. So, here comes, <laughs> here comes the Kronos. Uh, he's not really able to do so much, but he might be able to get into the back of this guy. And I mean, the, the mobility of this mech is just so crazy. I love it. No heavy laser. No SRMs. No medium lasers. Firing. Never mind. So now it's getting interesting because now it is turn of the Centurion. I want to see what he's doing with my... Um, where is it? My Uziel. Jumping. Alright, that's good. Oh god, I was sleeping. What do you want? That is pretty good. Because oh, now we are able... Fast, it's scary. Potentially... To destroy the Myrmidon. I will take that shot. Him up, him down, just like Actually hit both of the Thunderbolts. That's amazing. Now he's panicked. And he done. didn't do anything as a result. Which is uh, also kind of crazy. Now, with that... In the bag. I'm, I'm gonna go down here. And... We're gonna shoot three times. And the air-to-ground missiles. And we got a knockdown. Perfect. Yeah, this guy with his bolt-on AMS. Bolt-on AMSs are so crazy. They shoot so often. But they take a specialist slot. So there's that. But anyway, we have him on the ground. Which is super helpful. Uh, Yeah, I guess we'll do that. Now we can either go for the Centurion, or this guy. The Centurion is currently guarded, and I don't like that. We're gonna try to take the tank instead. And we got him. Move her down. Receiving you. So now we have a fail chance on the Supercharger, which I also don't like. Uh, I'm not gonna use that. Maybe we are fast enough anyway. <laughs> Just short. But that's okay. You know what? In that case, I'm also turning off the hot seat cockpit. So that we are not generating any extra heat. And we're gonna go for the second leg. Nice, we can actually shoot him. Right, he's stressed. Aha! There we go. That's what I wanted earlier. Also, just the leg. Yeah, whatever. He's down. Now, the big problem is still the Centurion that contests our Uziel. And I have an idea what I can do against him. First of all, we're we gonna shoot him to pieces, right? Tandem? No. No, because... Yeah, we'll just shoot that. And here you could see, thanks to his guarded state, we didn't really deal the most damage. But, I'm gonna stand and shoot this, and we're gonna shoot Thermobolts. And I really hope that gives him enough heat so that he is now not shooting. By the way, the current patch also, uh, in the patch notes, there was a there was a very note that, uh, that I really liked. And that is, um, mechs won't suicide shoot so often anymore. So when they have a lot of heat on them, they will consider, is it a good idea to push my limits now or not? And that's, that's good. That's really smart. So 30% is fine. Fire. Very nice. So, I also should think about what I want from this mission. How do we get out of here? What do we take with us? Currently, it's a little bit weird. Um, gonna shoot everything. I certainly don't want that Centurion. But maybe, just maybe, we can get something out of this here by... Overheating him? Maybe the engine is worth a bit. And even if... Even if I get a little bit of value coming from a pirate engine or so. I think I'm gonna be okay with that. Or maybe we just completely destroy that thing because something blows up inside. <laughs> That's okay, guys. Again, fast mission, milk run. We're gonna get some stuff. We're gonna get out of here. And then we're gonna outfit our Timber Wolf with whatever we have. And then ideally, I'm gonna take it to the battlefield for today already. Let's check it out. Worst case scenario is we're gonna just slap a Gauss Rifle in that thing. But then we'd also need a lot of accuracy and, um, you know, we need to make it count. That's three parts of a Centurion. We have a Gorgon. 
that came with a Thunderbolt 10, Tag, Plasma Cannon, and two streaks. That is not bad. Not bad at all. The Myrmidon. Snubnose PPC to Machine Gun Arrays. Nice. They are more yellow jacket parts. A Black Bull Gauss is nice. Evasion, Ignore, and Accuracy is actually quite good. And the Jam Chance mitigated by Gunnery? Yeah, we, we can do that. Let's take the Gauss. Also, it's worth a bit. Uh, 650,000 C-Bills. I like those Machine Gun Arrays, by the way. Also, Accuracy and Evasion, Ignore, and they can shoot a lot of times. Wait, six times only? Really? What? Why is that? What's wrong with them? Or do they have a bigger damage output now? I thought that you could shoot them like 12 times, but that's not possible anymore. Anyway, maybe it wasn't really possible at all. Maybe I was wrong. But there's also that MML. Let me take a look at this MML here. Uh, either LRM or SRM ammo. 15% jam chance mitigated by gunnery. Indirect fire with LRM ammo. Hits cluster towards same location. Ooh. Oh, nice. That's cool. But it's basically just an LR, like a, hmm. What is it? Is it a, it's a multi-missile launcher, right? Or is it a micro-missile launcher? Oh man, I, I'm getting confused here. Anyway, uh, definitely an MML firing 20 missiles for being hacked together from three different, different launchers. Actually impressed that it won't blow up in your face. Uh, maybe it will. So we can use LRMs or SRMs on that thing, but it's 14 tons. That is not worth it. The pirate variants of weapons are usually very heavy, but they bring some quirks with them. I'm not gonna take it, no. There's a Snubnose PPC. They are always valuable. They're pretty good. There's also a Thunderbolt 10. Now think about it, guys. Do we just dare take another Thunderbolt 10 and additional ammo in order to make the Stalker a little bit more streamlined? I like that idea. I really do. Active Probe. There's a Battle Computer Artemis and a Battle Computer Missile. And a battle computer recoil. Now that's good. Alright, I'm gonna take that missile thing. Um, Artemis we have already. Recoil? Do we need recoil? I don't know. Small cockpit, compact heatsink, got pirate ECM. There is an XL engine for a bit of money. I like that. Hatchet, heatsinks. Light ferrule, pirate fire control system. Got it. Single heatsink, cool it. Spiked. Another supercharger. It's always good to have one extra, you know. Uh, three bins of Gauss ammo. I think I have a double bin already. I don't need it. There's Artemis, there's Hydra, there's MRM Apollo. Nice. LK. It's two bins of Thermobolt. I'd rather have, like, guided missiles or something. So is the additional Thunderbolt the right choice here? I could take it. But then I could also shoot heat around. I want damage. That's not good. That's not efficient. No, I cannot take it, really. So I guess the Stalker is gonna stay where it is right now. I think this is also one of the first occurrences of Artemis LRM ammo. And we might want to take it, because... Um, we are lacking. We are lacking the accuracy coming from Artemis. Difficult choices here, honestly. But... Since we have a financial report coming up in nine days, I'm gonna take the XL... I'm gonna take, I don't know, something that's also valuable, I guess, or something that I want. I like the recoil battle computer. Or another Thunderbolt. Alright, I'll take the recoil, just to have it. Yeah, it's, it's okay, it's fine. Thinking about one more thing, coming back again to my initial thought. How do I outfit my Timberwolf? The idea is... There's nothing in here that I want to use for the Timber, no. That's fine, alright, we'll take it. So we got a part of a J. Edgar, we got the Blackwell Gauss Rifle, we got a Mind Dispenser, the Thunderbolt, hey, we got it, nice. An Artemis uh, Battle Computer, case can go, the basic cockpit can go, this can go. I think we have enough Endo Steel as well, but I don't know exactly. The XL Engine, again, just for money. Heatsink can go. Jumpies, get rid of that. Standard Fusion Engine is also worth 100,000. We get three bins of Gauss Ammo, as well as a bin of LK SRM Ammo. Honestly? That was good. That was really good. Uh, with that, we shouldn't have any, any money problems anymore for the next few episodes. One. <laughs> and um, I think I want to start to build on the timber. We're going to see how this goes. Again, maybe it is just stacking battle computers or stacking accuracy in general and just adding something like a Gauss Rifle to the double PPC build that we already have. So, Diamond Shark. Cool. Took jump point from no faction. All right. 
you guys are busy. Now, as I was saying, the finances are fine. And this is why we need the third mag bay. So important. With all the mags that are now getting that little bit of damage, it just stacks. There we go. So now, three days for the timber wolf. One, two, three. So we gotta stop here. And now we're gonna make it combat ready. Let's do it. 75 tons. Here we go. <laughs> I'm super excited. So, oh man, double PPC. So the first thing that we're gonna add is an exchanger, because I need that on the Mac. We have the double heatsink kit and the five engine heatsinks already, so that's nice. And if you want to take our Gauss Rifle, I'm gonna take the Black Will, put it to the side also, and you can see already, that is a little bit too much. And that is a problem. Oh no. Alright, so before we go any further, let me go back and take a look at the targeting systems that we have. We have a clan battle computer, which is nice. We have Artemis Ballistic Accuracy. Ballistic Accuracy is interesting. That's a plus two. Bloodsport Breaching. Oh, improved for gunnery and night vision. That is nice. I like that night vision part of it. I think I'm going to go with that for the moment. You can see we are really lacking good items for that thing. But there is a tracker sensor, which we could use. There is a range sensor, a jammer. Sure, I'll take the tracker here. And we're also gonna take a cockpit upgrade, which is gonna be a slick suite because it's the best we have. Oh no. <laughs> or is it even? It gives us piloting and tactics, but the clan cockpit gives us gunnery. Which we can just keep, you know, because it's a clan mech, it comes with that. I think I need the gunnery here. See, if I wanna make, uh, if I wanna use those weapons, I need to make them count. So. In order to get things done, let me take a look at ammo. What do we have in terms of rock ammo? We can add an LBX for the for the mech, no problem. But then it would be two PPCs and an LBX. I don't like it so much. We have ferro, we have endo, we have the heat sinks. That's good. We have no ECM, by the way. That's the thing that we are still missing. Could use the jammer and then use stealth on the mech. It would help with a bit of defense. Oh no. We have nothing for the timber yet. <laughs> nothing, I say. Uh, so the MRMs are fine. They would be very interesting. But currently we are missing ammo for MRMs. We have nothing there. We have some I uh, IATM ammo. I could add an arrow. Sure. Of course, lerms are always an option. But those would be in a sphere LRMs. And I am not really keen on them. It's just... We, we have nothing. So, energy weapons. Let's talk about energy weapons, guys. You can see we have the double PPCs here, but can we take one of them out and, say, put some, I don't know, ER mediums on the Mac? Is that better? So with three ER mediums, uh, we save weight. That's the that's a part of this here. Um, we got, like, 90 damage, and we got 60 heat. This here is 75 damage and 56 heat. So we basically save three tons. By just adding that rack of medium lasers, we also have the option to put a lower arm actuator now, if we had one, which we don't. <laughs> Alright, so no lower arm actuators here, that's not possible. Uh, but with that, we can now bring back the good old friend, let me see, 99 out of 99 is perfect. Uh, we can bring the Blackwell Gauss rifle and add some ammo to it and then we are good. So 70 damage, 3 heat. The black wall is just better. Yeah, it has the evasion ignore and the accuracy. And the jam chance, of course, but still. Um, anyway, let's get me some Gauss ammo. Maybe one bin of Gauss ammo has to suffice for the moment. Just eight shots, although a double bin would be better. So we get 20 shots out of that. Guess we have to. So now we have one and a half tons. And it's a bit of a problem. Gauss P plus three mediums. Two mediums. That is not a build. That does nothing. Seriously. That does absolutely nothing. I need some... I need some smaller weapons, you know? Let's, let's think about Gauss. Plus all the medium lasers in the world. Good old Gauss vomit build, you know? What about that? How many do we have? There's one more. <laughs> we have an ER large that gets us a little bit of a tonnage. Boost. It's fine. I would really like to take another, let's say, medium laser or something. 
Maybe that's it. Maybe it's a large laser, a Gauss rifle, and two... Oh, sorry, three mediums. This is not good. This is way too heavy. I don't like Gauss's for the reason. It's just too much. All right, let's think the other way around. If that doesn't work with the Gauss, let me keep that PPC, okay? And... What about we keep both PPCs? Now we have the exchanger. What about we add, instead of the double heatsink kit, we add the proto heatsink kit? <laughs> it doesn't do anything. <laughs> heatsinking is 69, giggity, and Alpha Strike is 103 now. Is that the same? No, it's 99 and 147. So we needed a lot of double heatsinks in order to get this done. Okay, how many heatsinks do we have? You know, this is also a way to build this mech. Just get all the heat sinking. Better? I mean, why not? And if we take those out... We could... Oh yeah, I think I like that. I think I like it a lot. So now we have two PPCs. I mean, on the arms, because they are fine there. We don't have the bonus accuracy, but as soon as we have the... Oh no, wait, we cannot even put... Lower arm actuators on a PPC. It's not possible. Um, but anyway, so we have two PPCs, and then I was thinking about something something like any kind of missile thing that might help us out. Just quickly checking what we have here. Bolt on rockets. We don't have the carrying weight. Oh, crazy. All right, fine. <laughs> so we have an MML uh, that might help us shoot a bit of missiles. We can take an LRM-15. You know, just a good old LRM-15. No problems there. Inner sphere variant. I'm gonna also drop a heatsink or two in order to get some ammo in there, and then we are good. It's 115. It's nothing crazy. But I think it's the right choice here. Yeah. For the moment. <laughs> Lots of machine guns. Yeah, sure. Oh, we have the mortars! Do we have mortar ammo? Give me a second. Where, where's mortar ammo? Huh. Two tons of ammo. That might be a thing. Bit of splash damage, why not? But those are guided, so they have a quite good direct fire accuracy. Two peeps, bunch of mortars. Let me quickly check that again, guys, because that might be a thing. So, mortar. Those are heavy, though. Whoa! Yeah, the Timberwolf is not the right mech to carry mortars. That's a 10-ton weapon, never mind. Never mind, I'm gonna just add an LRM-15. Or maybe a 20, even. Let me check. Nope. Alright, it's gonna be a 15. We're gonna add some ammo. We're good. And that's gonna be the build for the moment, guys. Oh god, all the back and forthy. I'm sorry about that. So a double bin of ammo should be enough. That is... that is a lot already. So do we have half a ton or something? Because we are currently half a ton under. And, um... Yeah, I don't wanna... I don't wanna put anything big in the mech anymore. <laughs> Fluid guns, no. The bolt-ons, no. Ah, uh, man. I wish I had another half ton of ammo or something. You know what? For the moment, that has to suffice. So one LRM-15, two PPCs, it is a midline shiny chrome mech. I love that. And I guess that's gonna be our timber, again, for the moment. But for the moment, this episode is over. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a rating, subscribe to the channel for the next episode, and I hope to see you tomorrow. Goodbye.